Bitcoin doesn't care about your track record, doesn't care about where you're from, who you're voting for, who you're having sex with. There's no systemic prejudice built into the system. I'm Justin Redrick, an author of From Bars to Bitcoin. I grew up in Charlotte. Most of my life was spent around playing basketball and just being with my mom for the most part, just me and her growing up. He is a, um, from the time he was a little one, very um, joyful, very excitable. This is me here in kindergarten. He enjoyed being around people. Well, Justin tried to uh, get a job, and, and that did become difficult. I think that the crowd that he hung out with presented a quick uh, approach to getting out of the situations that you're in. Messing around with uh, substances also uh, clouded his judgment. And I think with me working the way that um, I was working, I didn't recognize the shift until it was uh, it was a little late. I think all of it stemmed from the grief from uh, Travis and not being able to process it. So there, we were in there partying, like some folks from their neighborhood came in there. They were talking about their gang. They pulled out a gun and started shooting. I turned my back and I hear a gunshot. Turn the lights on, you see Travis bleeding out on the floor. Remember me taking off my shirt and wipe blood from his mouth. I was hoping he'll make it. But after a while, like I saw life leave his eyes. Took place right in there. I I needed money. I, I was still dealing with what was going on, what the, took place with Travis. Like sometimes I wake up in sweats or to gunshots, thinking somebody's shooting outside, but it's in my dream. I was in a desperate survival mode, I felt. So no one could hear me. So I ended up leaning on people who did. And that was people that, um, that I knew from my neighborhood. A person was telling me about how come up on some money. There's this guy they know. He's a scammer. So that means you should keep cash on him, was what most people think. We drive up late at night. He just walked around trying to search his house, see if he had some money. The man calls the police, and we just all take off running. Charlotte Mecklenburg police need your help identifying men they say are connected to a home invasion. So if you know who these men are, please call police. We get a knock at the door early in the morning. My mom said, Justin, it's the police. And then they just came in the house, shotguns pointed at me. It's, it was nightmarish, and sometimes I still have moments when that knock on the door came and how uh, they took him out in the expression on his face. Um, she was shocked. She was hurt. She wanted to know how she could save her son. After being in prison for about eight months, I didn't think about going home anymore. I knew that the more engulfed I got, the faster the time would go. I never owned a watch. I never looked at a calendar, none of that. I just went by what the sun was doing outside. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. However, it wasn't until like we started playing sports, I started to see prison differently. And Caledonia was where I fell in love with boxing, which helped me, help my time pass by tremendously. So I met this guy named Kirk in Caledonia. Kirk was my very first boxing trainer. He just taught me how to, you know, they had time to work on my footwork and balance. And so I would go out there every day working on that footwork, 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 footwork. The greatest thing I learned in prison was you don't need to know nothing to do something. Only thing you need to understand is that you got to work day by day. I didn't really know nothing, but I learned it. It wasn't until I started doing these type of things, I was like, man, shit, this is what you need in the everyday world. When I came home, I realized like, damn, I'm in the same financial predicament I was in that I tried to get out of with the crime I committed. Couldn't get any jobs. I tried working for two men in the truck, that failed. I tried to apply for valet trash, got denied. PF change as a dishwasher, got denied. And I was being denied because I, was, I had a felony record. That's when I knew I was into some shit. 
and entrepreneurship was gonna be my only route. Brother, can you spare a Bitcoin? It exists only online. Tell you the truth, I honestly don't get it. Why not use regular dollars? Bitcoin. You never heard of them a few weeks ago. Now everybody's talking about them. But is it a, is it a currency? I don't know. Or is it more like a stock? Or is it a tulip bulb? Or is We're it just debate that. stupid? <laughs> when I first learned about Bitcoin, first heard about it, and I was like, bro, what the hell is this? But I said, well, let me learn it. Don't take the initial... I guess toughness of the subject, don't let that stop you. Go learn this shit. I was interested in Bitcoin, seriously, because it was nothing at the time. It was 2016, less than 1% of the world was there. And no black people were there. So around that time, I launched a Bitcoin consulting agency to help people like me learn about managing money. I also wrote a book to share my experience. Bitcoin's culture brought together people who have freedom attached somewhere in their mind. Even if they want, even if you come for money, some people come to Bitcoin. I want freedom of my money. I don't really care about being rich. I want to get fucking rich. I don't care about freedom. I just don't want the government in my shit. All of these people come together, they converge together. In my experience, the black community doesn't focus on teaching what money is and how to build wealth through entrepreneurship. If you have zero wealth and zero financial literacy, you just think it's normal to go to jail over money. And we need to change that dynamic. I want to show what owning your own future looks like from someone who's done it from the bottom up and that they can do it too.